Good morning, my neighbors. Starting the coffee with your mother's chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. At the mole at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee. Nice. Nice. Of the bulletproof variety, my winter weight is starting to drop off. I can't even believe I'm saying my winter weight. It's kind of like the, remember in college what they call it, the freshman 15? What does that come from? Is it lack of exercise or just eating three meals a day in the cafeteria? I don't know why. Let's talk about people that help people. I mix with a community of guys that help guys. Now, I did it professionally for decades. That's what I did. I was a therapist for decades, taught in several colleges, I've had a nice career. And then I went from counseling, which focuses on the past, to focusing on the future as a coach. Helping people. Has my therapeutic background helped? Yeah, absolutely. Has my own shortcomings and failures, have they helped me? Absolutely. Especially the ones that I recovered from. Or the things that I made right. Does anyone ever look at an auto mechanic and say, you're just taking advantage of people who don't know how to work on their cars? No, no one ever does that, do they? Most people don't know how to fix a car when it goes wrong. Mechanics don't exist necessarily to optimize a car. They fix it when it's broken and just get it running. It's up to you to get it optimal. It's up to you to keep it clean. It's up to you to change the oil and such, right? But nobody ever says, those mechanics, all they do is take advantage of people, of hurt, broken people, hurt, broken cars. No, they don't, because they serve a purpose. I have had coaches who have helped me get unstuck in my life, get out of a rut, get out of a corner that I painted myself into. Anyone, any, anyone who is a professional helper has had utilized helping services. So I don't put people down. There was a time when I was seeing somebody for personal reasons, when I was seeing a therapist for personal reasons. And then I stopped looking at the past started looking at the future. And I started with a coach. The difference between looking back at your pain and why you screwed up, the difference between that and looking forward in your life to being prosperous, to being a good man, being a good, if you want someone in your life, if you're a man who wants someone in your life, She's not just going to knock on your front door. As a matter of fact, the wacky ones are plenteous. There's two things that can happen when you work on yourself. Number one, you feel better about you. Your body's in shape. Your wallet is in shape. Your emotions are stable. You've developed discipline. And the second thing that happens is you attract interesting, qualified, competent, high-value people. I know that's a buzzword now. High-value man. High-value women. I get that. I get that. And things go through phases. What is a high-value man? What is a high-value woman? Put your answer down below. You tell me what you think it is. Is it somebody who doesn't cause you problems? 
Is it somebody who's easy to get along with? Is it someone who is more predictable? You can see a trajectory that they are on that's positive? Or do you see them creating trouble for themselves? Or having had created trouble for themselves? Which will spill over into your life. If you date or marry trouble, that trouble now becomes yours. If you date or marry confusion, that confusion becomes yours. If you date or marry turmoil, you just inherit that. I created a meme yesterday, dating? And Soy Boy says, dating is to see if we complete each other, but we're not going to have kids because of climate change. And then Chad says, dating? Yeah, she's auditioning to be my wife and the mother of my seven children who will carry on the bloodline. One man living by fear, another man living by faith. Some people will say, neither one of them is a realist. A trial separation. In other words, I'll let you fuck other men so you can see if you miss me and want to keep our marriage together or relationship. Fellas, never ever agree to a trial separation. There are YouTube channels. I'm not even going to say who they are. I'm not even going to mention them. I don't want, what I don't want to do is start the habit of putting down other men, other channels by name. I'm not interested in that. Never ever agree to a trial separation. There's coaches, certifi certified coaches here on YouTube, whatever the hell that means who are actively promoting having a trial separation. Yeah. It's not like she's going to be going to a convent when you go through a trial separation. Even if you do get back together, you will never know who or how many men she planked. Most likely it's going to be a guy that she works with, an old flame, or a classmate on social media that she reconnected with. I don't normally use the phrase red pill and blue pill. I'm just not crazy about the binary system of saying people are separated into two categories. I mean, they make for great jokes. You know, there's two kinds of people in this world. Those who are lawyers and those who wanted to be lawyers. I love that. It makes for a great joke. So I'm not real crazy about separating people into Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, because what do those things mean anymore? But I will tell you this, there is, a, there is a, for lack of a better term, there is a blue-pilled way of thinking. And especially if it's done by an influential man who puts himself up there as a relationship expert, I know plenty of weak men who've utilized these quote-unquote relationship experts who tell them a trial separation is good. Yeah. Okay. It might have been good for one guy, but he's in complete denial about what happened during that trial separation. Men don't usually come up with that whole concept of trial separation. That's usually a female thing. And men agree to it because they're desperate. A, a solid man is never going to agree to a trial separation. The proper response to that is, honey, if you want to go, there's the door. I'm not here to save you. I'm not here to take away your confusion. If you want to leave, goodbye. Hmm, I wonder what this button will do from Dr. Smith, Lost in Space, 1968. Any Lost in Space fans out there? It was probably one of my favorite shows. I am not a huge fan of 
President Trump bragging about warp speed, Operation Warp Speed. Some say that he has to do it to just play along. And he thinks that not supporting mandates is going to mitigate that. I don't want to crap talk him, but I am going to be reasonably critical. For those of you that thought that it, I'm just blindly a Trump guy, you're wrong. You're wrong. He was the best thing going. He was the best thing out there. He was the best choice when we had several choices. Sometimes, sometimes you look back on situations. All right, so in one, within two months of the current president of the United States, we were bombing the shit out of a few countries within two months. And I said, ah, right on time, bombing the world again because we're so righteous here in the United States. I am not so patriotic, blindly patriotic, to think that we always make the right decisions that are completely neutral and have nothing to do with money or politicians being bought. But the past year and a couple months have been a shit show for the United States, much more than orange man bad. If you think that this idiot that's in there now, this puppet head, is actually running this country, you're stupid. It's obvious that this idiot doesn't even have the capacity to run this country. And you know what's behind him is Obama. Let's get real. What was one of the first things Obama did? He bought a house in Washington, D.C. to stay active in Washington and the affairs of this country and the affairs of the world. Because he still has work to do. I have work to do. And then, of course, he buys a house in Martha's Vineyard as well. A politician who had two terms, who's now one of the richest men in the country. Imagine that, using politics to get rich. But let's not compare the current president to the past president. I'm talking about the past president right now, and him bragging about jabs and such. I don't know why he's doing that. Some say it's part of the plan. Trust the plan. Fuck your plan. I trust what I see and trust what I experience. I don't trust anyone's interpretation of anything. Just wait. I've waited long enough. I'll believe everything when I see it. <clears throat> it's interesting looking at a $1.2 million condo and it says perfect for a weekend getaway. I had to laugh at that. They weren't even marketing it as a, like your main home. They were marketing it as a perfect for a weekend getaway. That's a different level, isn't it? That's like next level stuff. The $1.2 million home for a weekend getaway. Globo wants war really bad. It's obvious in the past month, isn't it? Have you seen that yet? We have been on the brink of World War III for about a month. Why do you think that is? Why do you think Globo is pushing war so bad? The whole, if you don't get fully jabbed, then you must be tested weekly, almost comes across as punitive, doesn't it? And not, it's because we care. It's as if... It's as if they want to see you test positive so they can say, I told you so. Funny thing, everyone I know who's been fully jabbed has had the wooga booga after they were fully jabbed. How's that working out for you? How long before the title of Christian nationalist is watered down and perverted? Few can even agree on what Christian means, and when it gets said enough, like everything else, it loses its meaning and becomes cool, goes mainstream, etc. And then it goes the same way that conservative did. Some people are saying, I'm a Christian nationalist. I almost started identifying as a Christian nationalist. I think people are way too quick to label themselves and others. 
this whole concept of Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal, and then of course now I'm a Christian nationalist. What the hell does that mean? One of the hardest answers to watch a man produce is to my question, when did your wife lose respect for you? Everything changes. The look on his face, his position, how he moves, his breathing, the tempo of his speaking, and where his eyes go. It's a necessary question that no one anticipates, but it creates an aha moment for the man to discover when and where he lost frame with her and lost control of his life. When did your wife lose respect for you? All of your marital and relationship woes cannot be blamed on a woman, gentlemen. But I am not white knighting for women either. Being pro-man does not mean ignoring the stupid mistakes that men make and the tight spots that they get themselves into. When it comes to grief, I teach people to pre-plan your grief. Now, how can you do that? Someone will say, how do you pre-plan your grief? I say this, it's like having a finite time period where you can cry or have a tantrum or do whatever you do when you grieve. And what this does, it eliminates a free-floating sadness where you're just sad 24-7. If someone leaves you, whether it be by their choice or yours, I'm not talking about death, grieving someone's death, I'm talking about when you go through a divorce or a breakup. When someone leaves you, whether by their choice or yours, you need to have the funeral. Just like there's funerals when people die. Bury, burn, flush, dispose. No more memorials. No more pining. You can't control the amount of pain that you have, but you can control the amount of suffering. When in doubt, do nothing. But keep the mind busy so it doesn't wander backwards. Think about this. From now on, you only have forward gears. You have drive and you have neutral, but you no longer have reverse. I watched two movies this week. The first one was The Many Saints of Newark. Having been a Sopranos fan, I kind of had to watch it. What are my thoughts on that? It was not a great movie. As a standalone film, okay. It was just okay. As a prequel, not good at all. I did have higher expectations. Uh, the two Ray Liotta characters, that was an odd situation. Those that saw the movie, you, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to give any spoilers here for those that still want to watch it. Those two characters were odd. I don't know why they did that. Silvio, weird. It was more like a Saturday Night Live skit. That's what it reminded me of. And where the heck was Polly Walnuts? Where did, he, where did he go? I did enjoy seeing Michael Gandolfini, uh, James Gandolfini's son, probably more out of a nostalgic desire to see his father. And you do see his father in the son. You get that vibe, like, right away. And that can't be acted or manufactured or engineered. It was Michael Gandolfini. What do they say? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. All I saw was his dad when I saw him. And that was heartwarming. Now the storyline was weird. I did not get a David Chase feel to it at all. Livia, who was Tony Soprano's mother, sounded like she was doing a Carmela impression. Overall, the movie was uh, just okay. I'm glad I saw it. But it was just okay. And if you're a Sopranos fan, then see it. You're almost obligated to see it. For instance, like when I saw 
El Camino, which was... Remember the movie El Camino? Right? Am I, am I saying that right? Which was after Breaking Bad. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was interesting. I got more satisfaction out of seeing that than I did watching The Many Saints of Newark. Sometimes, sometimes things just need to be laid to rest. But on a better note, I watched the movie Old Henry, which is a Western. If you get a chance to see Old Henry, you might enjoy it if you like Westerns. It took a couple twists and turns. I'm not going to give any spoilers here. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it just made me think of some old westerns that I enjoyed in the past. You might like Old Henry. And Tim Blake Nelson did a phenomenal job. He is not a Hollywood polished kind of guy. And you'll see what I mean when you watch it. Old Henry. I'm not going to give any. I'm not going to give it away. It's a good one. And with that, finish your coffee and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. You know, when I started speaking in, geez, 1974, the traditional advice was don't talk about sex, politics, or religion. And even then, I said, well, what the hell else is there to talk about? I mean, we've just described everything everybody's interested in and everything everybody's involved in. I mean, at least 50% of the reasons why people buy everything has to do with sex. Some are either not getting it or thinking this will help you get it. I mean, that's, that's why guys take out the trash. I mean, well, I'm serious. Go to any apartment of any single guy and take a look around. It ain't like he's taking the trash out every week, you know? But, but So he takes the trash out every Friday at home. Why? There's only one reason. And it ain't that he objects to having trash. He'd just have five trash cans in there. He wouldn't have, I mean, downstairs in my personal space in my office, that's been my solution. I don't want to empty the wastebasket every three days. I got eight wastebaskets, you know? When I was single, the first thing I did when I was newly single, as I went over to J.C. Penney and I bought 365 pair of underwear. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna do laundry for Christ's sake. I mean, <laughs> once a year, baby. That's when we're down to 364 in the trash can in the garage. We'll do some laundry, right? I mean, so so the guy, the married guy's taking the trash out for one reason and one reason only. I mean, that's it.